Okay, so let me solve this problem number 20. And this number is essentially a titration problem when weak base, such as a, a, a minus, is being titrated with an HCl, which is a strong acid, right? So for, for that, uh, you can anticipate, let me blow it up here, so by, because of uh, you're adding the, an acid onto the, the weak base, so your pH is supposed to come down like this, right? And so you have an abundant A minus, a lot of A minus in the beginning, right? And your A, your A minus level is getting smaller and smaller, and at this point, your, you all the A minuses are used up, right? So all the A minus that has been used up, so then then so that's what I said in my the last time in, in when I said all A minuses are gone, and so uh, therefore you ended up having everything is converted to weak acid, and at that point from now on. Uh, because all uh, you, what you have left it is at the equivalent point is an HA, and then they can actually go back to produce a small amount of H plus to give uh, make it uh, even more acidic. So therefore, if I draw that, that's an equivalent point. The pH of seven is about here, and your equivalent point is actually lower than uh, pH seven, which is more than acidic, right? So that's why. Less than 7, that means an acidic at the equivalent point. Okay, so let's go to the number 21. This is a, some troublesome problems. The problem is simply uh, uh, very uh, kind of misleadingly simplified. And I already said that this is not a good problem. So this is a, not a good problem. It is a, It could be a very nice problem to ask about the concept between the, the half, tit, half titration or equivalent point and the equivalent point. So let's think about you have a weak acid, HA, and titrate it, uh, gives an equal, a titration of weak acid using the strong base, I guess, uh, give a, a equivalence points of 9.71. So, you know, HA is here. That's your what you have in the beaker, and in your, I guess, uh, burette, you have uh, something like sodium hydroxide, and putting it in. So, therefore, I can anticipate the curve look looks like that, right? So, in the beginning, I have an HA. Uh, H A H A, but at some point that my H A's are all gone, so therefore I have a something like I have to use that up, and then then it kind of levels out. So this is a, what we call the volume. This is a volume of an A O H solution, and I'm I want to call this is a V E. Uh, e means this is an equivalent point, equivalence point, the volume at which. And uh, they choosing the pH halfway between. This is exactly when all the, this time is an HA are gone, right? So all the H's are gone. So then you have everything is left with A minus at that point. So an A minus is a, is a weak base. So you will have a pH higher than 7 at that point. And that's what you see here, okay? Equivalence of pH of 9.8, which is understandable, right? So this is an understandable. But they are not now asking that, what is a pKa value of this acid? The answer is, is the following. So if you go to the halfway between here, this is exactly the half of the equivalent volume, right? And this is the point at which you have a HA concentration is same as A minus concentration. Essentially, half, though you have a lot of HA, but 
At this point, half of HA is being changed to A minus. Right by uh, by uh, adding the uh, NaOH this amount. So at this one, if I were to measure the pH there, which is I don't know whatever the pH will be, and that pH will be same as pKa value of your uh, your sample your your your. Uh, Solution, and this is uh, can be find out from here. You recall the H buffer pH equation, which is a P. Uh, let me look at the, my reference reference book. Right, is a pH is a pKa plus log uh, a minus. A minus HA. And uh, at the halfway point, this value at the halfway point, this exactly 1. So therefore, log value on this is 0. Right? So therefore, you ended up getting these two value, pH and a HA, uh, pH is same as pKa value at the halfway point. And I don't have that information given up here. It just gives that the pH at the, uh, this point is 9.8, 9.18. Uh, and in the issue B, this is a 9.8. It is something smaller. This is somewhere in between, right? Uh, this is could, could be the one of the value, but we don't know which is going to be the correct value, right? So we don't know. I mean, this is could be one of them. This might be too little, but you know we don't know yet. And that, that's so. That's my verdict here. Okay. So the the take home message for the number twenty one is pH is same as pKa at uh, and your volume is half a halfway through the equivalent point. So it's a half. This called a equivalent point that concept and as you, you can see this from here the same concentration of up and down okay so uh, if you have any uh, more question this is actually quite related to the, uh, the the my comment that is posted on the the Google Doc there is a you know more diagrams that is trying to explain it to you and if you have more questions, just, just uh, write more questions, and then I can uh, try to answer it before your exam. Okay? So let's move on to the, the, the thing called the KSP. And then this is, a, this is a, not a bad problem. Okay? KSP means a solubility product. So the MgCO3 dissociated Mg plus, Mg plus 2 plus, CO3 2 minus. And the KSP is a part of the equilibrium constant, and that's an Mg2 plus here defined multiplied by CO3 2 minus. Okay? And then they asking that what is a molar solubility of MgCO3 in pure water? So what do I do? Okay, so let me let me move this one. Let me move my writing to the other side. Maybe I can move it to the, uh, let me, yes, I'll move it here, okay? And then I'm going to do is, I am going to choose a color that uh, that makes, makes stand out. And I'm going to start with an ice. So my initially, I have a lot of concentration of solid, okay? So I will just say initial molar concentration. And the changes, I will lose some and I will generate X amount, and I will generate an X amount. And then in equilibrium, they will have a lot minus losing some, and then you will generate small amount of ion um, magnesium 2 plus and the carbonate 2 minus. <laughs> the meaning of the KSP here is only concerns about here, so it's an X square B is the value. And then the, what, you, what you see here is the Kx value is 6.82, 10 to the minus 6. So x 
is just a square root 6.82 times 10 to the minus 3. And then what value do I have? Uh, that is uh, uh, 2.61 10 to the minus 3 molar. And the, what's the meaning of x is now here? That must be a uh, mg2 plus concentration. Also, that is a concentration of CO3 to minus. That was a meaning that we find it here. But let's see, have a pay attention to it. This, this one shows that from the original solution, this is an amount that I was, uh, I was able to make it dissolve. So that is a definition of molar solubility of this solid of MgCO3. So this X is actually also truly means a meaning of solubility. So that's why this number that you see is this one. Okay, this is a nice problem. Okay, so I am going to move on to the next problem, which is a number 23. And this one is, is a quite uh, involved, but it's actually not so bad. So let's read the problem uh, carefully one by one. So I have a solution containing this amount of copper 2 plus, this amount of uh, Fe2 plus, and the sulfide ion is S2 minus, okay? And then they, when they do that, uh, they precipitate, and this is a solubility product of those two numbers. And then what they are asking is, I want us to have a selective precipitation of one metal from the solution. And the question is, what concentrate of sulfide ion is the one? So for, your, uh, for the easiness of the argument, so here's, I, I'm going to draw a little, like a, I like this one. This is the way that I actually draw for my other discussion as well. Let's just say, that is uh, the scale that I am going to talk about. Sulfide ions, two minuses, the concentration. So this is a concentration scale from low to high. Okay, and then the, let's let me start with the KSP. Okay, KSP of CUS means concentration of Cu two plus. S2 minus, and the value is 1.3, 10 to the minus 36. And then what was given here is, okay, I'm telling you, this one is 0 0.036. So therefore, you can calculate S2 minus concentration from, let's say, copper S, uh, solubility uh, product here is uh, if you multiply that uh, that's uh, essentially 1.3 divided by 0 0.036 times 10 to minus 36 right so pretty small numbers and then and you will you will find out uh, that is actually 3.6 10 to the minus 35, okay? So that is a concentration. And uh, what's that really, uh, what's that really means is, if I have this one, let me just say this is a 3.6, 10 to the minus 35, all a concentration. And then if you have a concentration higher than that, right, that you will have a precipitation Right? Precipitation of CUS, right? And this is essentially CUS is soluble. So I, I draw this kind of the, the shaded area where uh, this concentration above which you have a selective precipitation of CUS. And then let me choose a different color. So this time I'm going to choose a red. And then the, I'm going to use this one. This is a FES, so KSP FES, which is a concentration of Fe2 plus S2 minus. And then you're going to write down 6.3 and to the minus 18. And then this is the same drill here. 
uh, you are going to put this one as I think I, I need to use up some space here so this one I'm going to plug in the value of showing up what is here 0 0.0 Four, four molar concentration of Fe2 plus. So from here, S2 minus that you calculate by plugging the numbers, and you will get 1.43 10 to the minus 16 m. Okay. So this, if you look at this number, and uh, look at where is the number? That number. This is a 10 to the minus 35. This is a 10 to the minus 16. So this is a larger number. So I'm going to put this one right here. And then this is, uh, let's say, 1.4, 10 to the minus 16 M. And what that means is at the concentration higher than that, you will have precipitation of FES precipitation, right? And uh, below that is a, is a soluble FES. Right? So that's uh, this graph essentially comes, kind of summarizes what's the scenario here. So by increasing your concentration of SE, you start to see the essential precipitation. This is a region, the window, where you only see the precipitation here, up and you don't see the precipitation in the bottom. That precipitation is CUS. So that's why at this concentration, CUS, uh, pre selective precipitation can happen, okay? And then eventually, FES will start to precipitate a sufficiently large concentration, which is uh, 1.43, 10 to the minus 16 molar concentration of sulfide. Okay. Okay, so now we are going to solve the number 24, and I have to tell you already the number 24, uh, there is no uh, right answers, okay? So I find that this problem is do not have a, we actually calculate many times. I run it through. As far as I'm concerned, that the correct answer is 10 to the minus 15 molar. Uh, that will be the, my concentration, and then this, let's see that how how I'm solving this this problem. If you guys has a has a uh, better way to solve this problem, uh, let me know. Uh, but as far as I know, I I tried to solve this problem multiple times, and I was not able to get it. <laughs> okay. So anyway, this problem is about what is called the formation for this ion complex. Okay. So aluminum has uh, this formation constant. So let me just uh, write down the, the definition of uh, this reaction. So, okay, so what that means is aluminum. Uh, by the way, I want to refresh your memories uh, on the aluminum. So aluminum is uh, on the th third column. Uh, so it's on aluminum as uh, Al3+. Plus. And then as you can see this complex shown up here, they can go back and forth, and uh, ALF6 and the 3 minus. That means you are reacting with 6 fluoride ions, just like that, and then KF values. And then if you look at the KF value, it is enormous, 10 to the plus 19, right? So what that really means is, this reaction shown up here is really favor the formation of the aluminum uh, hexafluoride. Uh, that's the that's a compound. So I have that information, and I'm going to essentially establish the ice problem. Um, but let me just uh, before we go, Kf is being defined based on that uh, equation shown up. Al3 plus and F minus concentration to the power of 6 and AlF6 3 minus concentration. Okay, so that's the that's an equation that I will I will find out. So let's start with an initial condition. This is the little tricky one, so you need to kind of follow this. So initially, you have aluminum concentration, H, uh, Al3+, plus, 
And I'm going to show it as a, something easier to read, which is a 0 0.038. So that's the same as 3.8 multiplied 10 to the minus 2. So that's a molar concentration. And then also looks like the sodium fluoride. So this is an F minus concentration is given here, which is same as 0 0.29. And then looks like no other information, so this is not provided here. So uh, what I'm going to do is, okay, so I'm going to take the change. Okay, so let, let me say that. I'm going to pick it in a way. I am going to completely use that up, right? If you use that up completely, and there will be the uh, minus 6 times 0 prime 0, 0.38. And at the, at the same time, you will generate 0 0.038 amount of aluminum hexafluoride. That's the one that you, you will have here. And but now, what has happened is you, you, will, you will calculate this number quickly in the back of your mind. And then that's, uh, this number is actually smaller than this number. So we can, we can find out this one can be completely used up on, on, in this one scenario. Uh, by doing so, what is going to... Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, I'm sorry about sometimes... Uh, isn't FES insoluble? Okay, why the answer is not FES? Okay, okay. Uh, and let me let me go back to the some question about FES. So yeah, FES is insoluble, but the problem that we is at what concentration of sulfide ion. So this is a concentration diagram. That we we figure that the this by increasing the sulfide ion concentration from here, from this sulfide ion concentration, you will start to have a, this precipitation of sulfide, right? Showing in the uh, line here. Right? So therefore, uh, you what concentrated sulfide will precipitate begin to form, and what is an identity? Which one precipitate first? At what concentration? So that's why copper sulfide precipitate here, right? This is a copper sulfide precipitate here. When you kind of increasing the concentration, that's what you see first. And then from here, you see both precipitation of sulfide copper and uh, iron sulfide at the same time. Okay, uh, so that yes, so FES is insoluble, uh, but according to this, is actually copper sulfide is even more insoluble uh, based on the solubility product. I'm sorry about the WebEx difficulties uh, for some of you. Uh, but you know, like I promise, uh, that this is a, you, you guys get, as you guys can see this. Th I'm recording this, and that this video recordings uh, has been uh, posted on the YouTube as soon as I'm done. And um, today I'm going to solve particularly the most challenging problem, which is a, um, a number. Actually, I've been I've been solving this problem from uh, number 20 and the 21 and the 22. 23 and 24. 24 is uh, something that uh, the problem, the answer is I be believe it is not true. So then uh, that's why I'm, I'm trying to explain to you. Okay, so let, let me take a little bit moment uh, to, to recap this. So you have this initial concentration, you have that concentration. And what I did is I assumed that everything is gone for the aluminum is concerned, and that will accompany by you need to lose this amount, and then you will generate this amount, okay? And imagine that this has ever happened. And what, what that means is you have nothing there in terms of aluminum 3 plus. And so therefore, uh, this is uh, need a, what is what I, I hear is a secondary changes you need it. Because up to so far, you have no AL3 plus. So, and then you have generated some, so you're going to, what's going to happen is, you are going to lose some, and you are going to generate 6x, and you are going to back generate the x. So this is my point of, of this. Okay, so what, what I'm saying here is, up to this stage, right, 
So you can have these normal stages to simplify my idea that this is more like a zero here, right? So there's no aluminum here, and there is a U hat generating some at, uh, this, this amount. But now uh, you want to actually go back, generate some reaction backward by losing some of a aluminum hexafluoride complex to regenerate Al3+, plus and then generate some form of a fluoride uh, minus ions and so on. So, and then at the end, an equilibrium, you will see that, okay, I will have an X molar concentration of Al3+, plus, and this one is essentially, uh, what do you see here? is actually 0 0.062 plus 6x, okay? And then this one is 0 0.038 minus x. So, so this, the challenges of this problem is you need to kind of assume two stage changes to simplify the phenomena, okay? So if this one uh, doesn't make sense, uh, you can think about it. And you can uh, post some questions. Uh, I will try to answer in a different way. But I think that some of you might get this, my idea. It's almost like you have this one, you completely use that up, and then actually you back generate some amount by generating this x. So and at the end, you will have this amount of x here, and that's an amount of fluoride here, and that's an amount of the complex. So that this one goes up. Uh, to this, and uh, this one goes to that, and uh, that one goes to this is a simply just an X. So let me let me pull that up. Uh, and then the, what I'm going to do is, uh, as you already kind of expected, this X is probably very small, right? X is very small. So therefore, this one is approximately already 0 0.062. And this is approximate to be 0 0.038. And then my calculation could be very easy. So my KF value is I need to put my X. That's my concentration of aluminum 3 plus. And what's my fluoride uh, concentration? That's an approximate to be 0 0.062 to the power of a 6. Right? See the power of 6. And then the aluminum hexafluoride is 0 0.038. Okay. And that number is pretty big, 7 times 10 to the minus 19. So then you can solve it for X, which is a concentration of Al3+. And what was the question? How much aluminum ion will remain at equilibrium? Pretty much, the question is, what is our Al3 plus concentration, right? So this, uh, if you solve this for x, and you will find out 9.6, 10 to the minus 15 molar. I did it many times and to, to get this, and that's a, once again, aluminum 3 plus concentration. So this is our answer, but the answer is, uh, this one is more or less the form that I, that I see. Uh, okay, so that's, I like the, so you guys asked, what about the 0 0.38 for Al3 plus? Yes, so uh, this is the whole game that uh, I've been trying to explain it to you. Uh, so let me try one more time. Al3 plus 6F is AlF6 3 minus. In the beginning, you have a 0 0.38 and 0 0.29. And what's going to happen is this KF, KF value is enormous, right? This is a 7 times 10 to the 19. That means they really like to go to this side, right? So what's going to happen is they really like to go to, to form this compound when you have initially this amount. And then you, I, I just make a guess, making a guess, a guess game here. I'm just assume that let's suppose this one is completely used up. Okay, so if I say, uh, 
if it is completely used up what I can see is this is an initial concentration C is minus 0 0.038 I just assume this as making an assumption and then what has to happen if you if I make that up happen uh, this accompanied by losing six um, mole times of this compound which is a six times 0 0.038 and if you multiply 0 point uh, so let, let me let me actually pull up my calculators and calculate one more time here uh, 0 0.038 times 6 so this one is essentially same for me say minus 0 0.0 228 which is now here this is in business this one and this one which so this number is smaller than what you have originally provided it so we can continue to uh, dry up use this one up because this is an amount that is needed and you have more than what can react it so this assumption is valid because that can be completely used up and this is an amount is needed and you do have more than what you needed up there right and and at the same time because of by losing this you will generate the same if because this is a one mole and this is a one mole so you are going to generate 0 0.38 moles on there so that's the first case scenario I am going to say first that so this is the first changes completely use that up and then what I'm going to say is because that I can I can show you in a different way after my first stages what is going to happen what's my kind of a scenario quote-unquote equilibrium I have nothing and I have what is the number uh, that's a 0 0.062 and I have 0 0.038 and this is and then I, I'm going to see this is not good right this is not good but this is convenient to 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 get here but so that's a story that I have this compound I have that compound I have completely used up and this is what is left and this is how much you generate it and then I need to once again I need to do one more correction onto this which is okay from here I'm going to lose some moving the reaction back and that will generate six times X and that will generate X amount back because we cannot have nothing there we should have something so this something has to come from the other side and so you're making losing some you're generating six times of the compound and then therefore this is a, what I say C2 and the true equilibrium now is X 0 0.062 plus 6x 0 0.03x minus x so that's the same concentration of AL3 plus this is a concentration of F minus and this is an AL F63 minus <laughs> And do you do you see let me see okay do you see this one and this one is the same okay I hope you guys see this one this one this one and the one that you guys saw up here is essentially identical it's just here the I give a two-stage idea I just condense this two-stage idea into one single step yeah okay Oh, you got it? Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Uh, some problem has constants with IC tables, but we, uh, like chlorine case. Okay, I, I don't follow this, but if you guys uh, put some, uh, well, okay, where this 0 0.062 coming from? Yep. 0 0.06 coming from is, uh, this one is, so somebody asked, this is just nothing but you subtract 0 0.29 minus 
zero point two two eight. That is a zero point zero six two. Okay, so that's uh, essentially what I shown up. The initial concentration change of the first, and uh, that's what the concentration has been left over. You got it. all right. Uh, and uh, what else? I think that this is uh, what what uh, makes it here is uh, what is a little bit cumbersome here is uh, you need to think about two stages. You lose everything, and then you you generate something back, and by having this, and then the, we have the convenience of once again, this is a negligible quantities, so that we can just con uh, finally establish the same from here. To the same line up there, and we can solve the problem. Uh, okay, wow, that's a, that's a lot. And then the final, the number 26, is what happened to the, uh, at low pH for aluminum hydroxide, okay? Aluminum hydroxide is aluminum is 3 plus, right? So aluminum OH, I guess a 3, that's an aluminum hydroxide, but at low pH means acidic solution, right? And high uh, concentration of uh, well, high H plus concentration. And so because of that, you are going to have, uh, this is, I don't have a, too many, so, so let, let, let me show it up here. So aluminum hydroxide, which is uh, now dissociate into aluminum three plus and three times uh, three times OH minus, and and then from the high concentration of H plus, and this is all gone, right? And you will have left with an Al three plus, but do you see the Al three plus here? And then we don't, right? And then the, what what you see here is a uh, Al three plus will be surrounded when it becomes an hydrated compound. So it's an oxygen with H uh, two O H two O. You know this is a little plus here. This is a little minus here. So it, this is a more like a little uh, red dots that surrounding this. And this is an H, H. So these are the all H's. Water coming from here. And and I'm just giving a little coloring of an oxygen as a, something that is a more electronegative. So this is more like a negative head surrounding the oxygen. So writing this one is, oh, you have an aluminum, but H2O, the so six of them is forming the hydrate. Okay, three plus. So Al, H2O6, and this is essentially Al3 hydrate. So that's that's what you have here, and so the Al6 plus, and that one is a uh, uh, be dissolved in this at high, uh, at low pH, high concentration acidic solution when you have those. And the D is the correct answer. Okay, so I solved this problem up to 21, and then let me stop the recording because that will be